1st, a day of reckoning for Larry Nasser. The one-time doctor was sentenced today in Lansing, Michigan, in a case that sent shockwaves through American gymnastics and abroad. It is my honor and privilege to sentence you. After a week-long hearing, Michigan Judge Rosemarie Aquilina pronounced Larry Nasser's fate, up to 175 years for sexually assaulting scores of women and girls, including Olympic gold gymnasts, under the guise of medical treatment. You do not deserve to walk outside of a prison ever again. I've just signed your death warrant. With the sentence, the courtroom erupted in clapping as some of Nasser's victims and the prosecution team embraced. The former sports doctor had pleaded guilty to victimizing young athletes over more than two decades with USA Gymnastics and Michigan State University. Your decision to assault was precise, calculated, manipulative, devious, despicable. Today, Nasser attempted to apologize to his victims. There are no words that can describe the depth and breadth of how sorry I am for what has occurred. But the judge was having none of it. She read parts of a letter that Nasser had submitted to the court in which he charged his accusers were not telling the truth. Would you like to withdraw your plea? No, Your Honor. Because you are guilty, aren't you? Are you guilty, sir? I said my plea, exactly. More than 150 victims had shared wrenching testimony over the past seven days, concluding today with Rachel Den Hollander. She was the first to publicly accuse Nasser in 2016. She says she was 15 when he first abused her. And this is what it looks like when people in authority refuse to listen, put friendships in front of the truth, fail to create or enforce proper policy, and fail to hold enablers accountable. Just last week, three USA Gymnastics board members resigned. And now the NCAA has launched an investigation of Michigan State. That is after the Detroit News reported that 14 university officials learned of Nasser's crimes over the past 20 years, but did nothing. Judge Aquilina called today for a federal investigation into how Nasser wasn't exposed earlier. The You're Michigan Assistant of Attorney of General, Department Angela General, Povilaitis, said Nasser would still be in his position had it not been for those who bravely came forward. The breadth and ripple of this defendant's abuse and destruction is nearly infinite. But we have also seen how one voice can start a movement. Povilaita said she hopes the Nasser case will encourage girls and women everywhere to speak out. The fact that the women led the investigation, the prosecution team, and that three female judges now sentenced defendant Nasser is poetic justice. Nasser has already been sentenced to 60 years in federal prison for possession of child pornography. There were also new developments late today related to the leadership and culture of gymnastics that allowed these assaults to continue for years. The CEO of the U.S. Olympic Committee apologized for failing to protect the girls and women involved. He also called for the resignation of the entire board of directors of USA Gymnastics. And Michigan lawmakers call for the resignation of the Michigan State University president. After seven days of painful testimony, there's still so many questions about why the abuse went on for so long. We explore just some of those now with Robert Andrews. He's the founder and director of the Institute of Sports Performance. He is a coach who worked on mental training with Olympic gymnast Simone Biles and Lori Hernandez, among others. Robert Andrews, thank you for being here. First of all, tell us what is the Institute for Sports Performance? What sort of work do you do with athletes? Uh, help them handle pressure of big, uh, big performances like uh, national and world championships, Olympic games, help them manage distractions, create a real strong mentally tough mindset. And, and I do a lot of work with injured athletes, helping them come over, uh, overcome the psychological impact of serious sports related injuries. Have you been surprised at the revelations about Larry Nassar? 
Um, you know, yes and no. Um, it doesn't surprise me given the culture. I'm shocked at the depth of it and how many victims that have been affected by this and their families. Uh, so it's a mixed bag for me. It's, it's not surprising though. When I, when I heard the news initially, a lot of things started clicking and falling in place for me. Tell us just quickly a little bit about the, the, the world that young gymnasts live in, the, what they have to go through to get to the highest levels of competition. Uh, well, a lot of that <clears throat> depends on the culture in the gym where they're training and, and their parents, of course. You know, I call it a three-legged stool, the parent, the coach, and the athlete, and a weakness in any one of those legs can prevent the athlete from reaching their full potential. Uh, in an ideal world, you know, there would be great coach-athlete relationships and great parent-coach-athlete relationships. However, in the current USA Gymnastics culture, there's, there's quite a few gyms out there with horribly abusive coaches uh, running the shows. And I think that this has started with uh, the leadership on the national level. And uh, coaches go to national team training camps and watch how athletes are treated on the women's side. I'll, I want to I clarify. And then they go back to their gyms and they carry that virus with them. On the men's side, I worked with the men's program for over five years and I didn't see any psychological abuse or screaming or yelling. There were other issues on the men's side that I feel like need to be addressed, but on the women's side in particular, a tremendous amount of horrendous psychological abuse and manipulation and shaming and degrading and, and humiliation and how you dare not question authority. And that's what set this whole thing up. Why, but how can that be? How could it be that these, that he had access to these young girls for so long without any eyes, any supervision? of what he was doing? That's the question we all have to get the answer to. Uh, when you, he, he created the perfect feeding ground for himself, and that, that might sound cold or harsh, but when you have girls that are terrified of leadership and, and a guy like Larry Nasser comes in and sneaks them food and is kind to them and treats them with some kind of dignity and befriends them and listens to their problems and complaints, and he's this renowned doctor, well then he created trust with them and he groomed them over many, many years. And so, uh, and, I, and I also think there were many people in, in leadership positions with USAG that were totally asleep at the wheel, if not in total denial about what was going on. And I, I believe there were people that knew what were going, was going on and refused to do anything about it, just like MSU. Yeah. You mean knew that there was sexual abuse going on in addition to the mental dis abuse you're describing? Well, the mental, everybody knew about. It was well known, and, and that was a lot of my work was teaching these girls how to deal with that or teach the coaches how to buffer the athlete from that kind of psychological and mental and emotional abuse. But if we have girls getting hush money, then people knew, right? To me, that's obvious, and we I'd like to know names. You know, who was it that that set up these hush money accounts with these girls to not speak up and not say anything, or when, when things were reported years ago, why has it taken this long, and why has it taken these brave women's voices and empowerment to create the change when this has been going on for so long? Uh, Dominic Musiano's been talking about horrendous psychological abuse way back when. I'm just wondering why it's taken so long. And that's, that's, I think, what people are trying to understand how, because it's clear that with, with that sort of system, what he was doing, it, it was much easier, it seems, for him to get away with it because everybody was used to some kind of abuse. Absolutely. But how, I keep coming back to, who's in charge? Is, was anybody being held accountable? Evidently not. Uh, and you know, you, it's, it's an old cliche, but leadership always starts at the top. You know, so you look at the president and begin to work your way down through uh, national team coordinator, women's program director, and other people in positions of power who uh, clearly saw that the way that, that girls were being treated. You look at Maddie Larson's testimony yesterday. You know, two falls at Worlds annihilated her. She was shunned and, and ignored and degraded and humiliated and, and poor. She was a beautiful, dynamic, powerful gymnast the, that the system just, it just crushed when she made two mistakes at world championships that, that cost USA a gold medal. And she's one of many that have been, victed, been victims of that type of abuse in the system. And you, that can set them up for, you know, I don't have a voice. I don't have any sense of personal power. 
I can't ask for help because I know I'm not going to get it. And so Larry just swept in and, and picked whoever he wanted is what I believe happened. Do you believe that this sort of, that sexual abuse could be taking place right now on the part of other team doctors, other um, individuals who no. are involved? I, I don't see that. God, I hope not, but I don't see that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Larry was, uh, I had one incident with him in two, the 2012 National Championships where a girl on the women's national team texted me to meet. We were going to meet to just help her get ready for the competition. Well, where are you? She was in the treatment room. Well, that was Larry's domain. I said, I'll be right there. So when I walked in, it was almost like have you ever seen a, a, a female a mother dog with puppies? And when another dog comes around, they go on full alert. I felt that. I'm a real intuitive guy. And I remember I felt that reaction from him, like, mm. what are you doing in here? And, and when I found out he had been accused and arrested, everything made sense. It's like, he didn't want me in that domain. If those girls confided in me over time, they, they might let me know about him. So he never referred me anybody, knowing good and well how I could have helped him. So all the pieces started falling into place. So he had it under wraps. He had his system in place. <clears throat> and I just, I just don't believe there would be anybody else abusing girls in that system. Well, we certainly hope not. At least, at least not and, sexually. Well, we certainly hope not. And we certainly hope that things are going to change because the system you describe is just uh, horrible. I don't know of any other word for it. Well. I can guarantee you there's going to be change because there's so many of us that are demanding it. And these brave 160 young women and, and girls, right. they've, they've busted the door down right. and created the, 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 the room for all of us to push through and demand change. Robert Andrews, we thank you. My pleasure.